Today I want to share with you guys my workflow for processing Magic Lantern raw video shot on the 5D Mark III. So this is a little bit different to um, how most other people are processing Magic Lantern RAW files. For me, it is the quickest and most accurate way. So I've actually spent a lot of time trying to figure this out and it's caused me a lot of headaches. I always wanted the RAW video to look um, just exactly the same as it did with the baked in picture styles. I was really happy with how they looked. Um, I just wanted that added sharpness and that added uh, dynamic range that RAW enables. So I was really frustrated for the longest time and um, I spent weeks and weeks um, and now I've been able to actually develop a lookup table that essentially copies um, the internal picture profile produced by Canon. So when you're actually recording the video um, and then processing the video, it doesn't look completely different than it did on the screen, which is the, the problem that I was having. So I'm not actually gonna show you guys how to convert your raw footage as it's stored on the card to DNG, um, simply because there are plenty of tutorials online about how to do that. Um, I'm currently using MLVFS, um, which stands for Magic Lantern Video File System. Uh, I will put a link in the description to that piece of software. I do use the Mac version, but there is also a PC version. All right, so the first thing that we actually wanna do is take the lookup table that I've created, by the way, the link for that is also in the description below, and actually paste that into the folder, um, which will then enable that lookup table to be used within the um, DaVinci Resolve uh, UI, so we can actually apply it to our footage. I'm gonna select the folder that um, I have that lookup table stored in. Now I'm gonna open another finder window and this time I'm gonna to navigate to um, the library folder, application support, Blackmagic design, DaVinci Resolve, and then the lookup table folder. Just gonna simply copy that over. Oops, I dragged it over. I'm just gonna copy that back. So now the lookup table is inside that folder. And I'm just gonna do a quick check just to make sure that it is in DaVinci Resolve. So just quickly importing some footage and I'm going to right click on the node, 3D LUT, and there it is. So we're ready to go. Now the first step is to open a new project. Once we've opened a new project, we're going to navigate to the file tab and we're going to choose the project settings menu. Just going to check that our, our timeline frame rate is correct and then select under color science, DaVinci YRGB color managed. Now we're going to go to the camera raw tab, make sure that it is RE Alexa and then select RE default. Now on the color management tab, we want to change the timeline color space and output color space to RE log C. We're gonna check uncheck, sorry, we're gonna uncheck use Mac display color profile for viewers. Now we're gonna navigate to where our um, raw footage is stored and you'll see that they're just folders full of DNG files. So I'm gonna go ahead and import um, the files that I'm gonna process, batch process today and add them to the media pool. So we just drag them down into the media pool, just like that. Now there will be a dialog box popping up and it'll ask us if we wanna change the settings. Because we've already set our settings um, previously, we, don't, we, we can just click don't change. So now we move across to the edit tab and the first thing you wanna do is make sure all of the footage is the same frame rate. Select all, right click clip attributes and check the frame rate. So if you do have some footage that is maybe a different frame rate, maybe 25 or um, maybe 50 or 60 frames, which you can do with Magic Lantern RAW, we can make sure that all the clips are the exact same frame rate. So now that we've done that, we can just drag them down onto the timeline and that gives us um, a timeline full of our footage. You'll notice straight away that it is already looking like a log gamma curve and a log color space. And that is because we did select RE log C as our timeline and output color and gamma space. Moving across now to the color tab, 
So this is where you enter the settings that work with the lookup table. Decode using clip and set the white balance to custom. Tick highlight recovery. And what I do usually is leave the color temperature for now, but change the tint to 20. I dial in the sharpness to about 35, that's what I prefer, but you can enter your own value here. And this is the important part. I set gain to 50. Now that increases the mids and that gives us a workable image for the lookup table once it's applied. So now what we want to do is actually select all the footage by holding shift and clicking the very last clip and then you want to click use settings. That's going to apply those settings to all of the clips. So now you can see these settings are applied to every single clip on that, that timeline. In this part, we're actually going to apply the lookup table to the whole timeline. In the top right hand corner, you'll see that there are two little um, dots and then beside that is the option to select clip or timeline. So now you can see that when we scrub through in the viewer, we're actually scrubbing through the entire timeline and not individual clips. So we're going to add a new node and I'm just going to link this node up. Now this is affecting the whole timeline because we're on the timeline layer. Right click, 3D LUT and then select the LUT that I have created. Immediately, this is going to affect all of the footage on the timeline. And I'm just gonna scrub through just to show you guys that. So you can see our footage is looking pretty good already, but it does need some tweaking. So I'm gonna go back to our clip layer. So now we're affecting individual clips. And I usually mess with two different parameters in this stage. They're really the only two parameters you need to be worried about. Those are color temperature or white balance. And the second one is gain. So I'm gonna dial in my white balance for every single clip individually and my gain. So we're gonna just make sure that my exposure level is sitting where it should be, you know. But essentially the lookup table that I've created, once you get the gain setting correct, um, where it's supposed to be sitting, the black and the white level are gonna be almost perfect. There used to be a really harsh roll off um, to the highlights with when I was using BMD film, um, but this is kind of, but this I guess has resolved that issue. So now we have a really smooth highlight roll off, which I love. There is an option to play with the highlights though, um, just under the sharpness in the camera raw tab. Um, occasionally I will actually play with this value if I have a scene with large dynamic range um, and I want to keep some of that um, you know, detail in the midtones um, by using the gain. I can always bring down the highlights, there's always that little bit extra room to move and that's great. But for the most part, highlights is set to zero. So moving over to the deliver tab now, this is where we are going to export our footage in the chosen codec so that we can begin editing in your NLE of choice. So I'm just gonna choose Apple ProRes 422 HQ and I'm gonna select individual clips because we want all of our clips to be individual files themselves within the folder. If you do want to have a little bit more flexibility with your footage, you can choose Apple ProRes 4444 um, or the XQ option. The next thing I'm going to do is click Advanced Settings and then I'm going to choose Force Debayer to the highest quality. And that's just basically going to give us the highest quality of um, raw decoding. Make sure that you're exporting your audio and all your settings are in line. All of my clips are... Um, all of my clips have unique names, so I can essentially just click source name and I'm not gonna have any conflicts with file names. So you wanna make sure that you either select a custom name or that all of your um, source file names are different before you render. Just wanna make sure we're rendering at maximum speed. And now select your output folder. I'm gonna render to the desktop. We've got 20 clips here, let's render. So that's it, once we have our 422 files, we can go straight into our editor and begin editing. I will also make further adjustments um, in Premiere, um, and that's just normal, uh, but for the most part, all of your white balance 
and all of your exposure adjustments have already been done. You might think that this is actually, you know, adding an extra step, but really when we're doing this, um, we're transcoding footage um, to a really usable format. And we're also doing our white balance and exposure adjustments on the fly, which means that when we get into the editor that we don't have to do that anymore. So that's my post-production workflow when working with raw video uh, from the 5D Mark III with Magic Lantern. And I gotta say, I haven't been happier with the way my footage looks in a long, long time. The capabilities that uh, this firmware has unlocked with the camera is just phenomenal. So thanks guys for watching. Remember to download the lookup table uh, in the description below. Leave a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave a comment down below uh, if you've got a question for me. If any of this was unclear, I'd be happy to help. And I try to answer as many questions as I can. So thanks once again for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.